So, there are two concepts I would like you to uh, get familiar with, they, these are called pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. So, these are words that you may see being used a lot in the context of development, drug development and definitely in the context of uh, uh, modeling in pharma. So, a simple way to think about it is pharmacokinetics is what does the body do to the drug. So, you, you pop a pain pill or you inject or somebody in your family injects insulin into themselves, what really happens? Okay, what, what, uh, so, so for instance, let us uh, uh, brainstorm a little. So, when you, uh, you must have all had a brufin or an anacin at some point, you, you pop it in, what, what do you think happens uh, to the pill? It dissolves in the bloodstream. It dissolves in the bloodstream, but you are popping it in your mouth. So, the first thing is it goes through your digestive system, but you are absolutely correct. You want it to reach usually the nervous system uh, at the end, but uh, what does it do? So, the first thing you need to make sure is you have enough drug to withstand the horrors of the digestive system. The digestive system can be a very uh, challenging place, you the stomach is very acidic and then there are all kinds of um, uh, enzymes which come to digest anything that goes into the stomach and then stuff is absorbed from the intestines into the bloodstream. What about if you inject insulin, what do you think happens? It goes directly into the bloodstream. So, that is the difference between uh, those two uh, those two kinds of administration. There are all other manners of interesting administration. You may have seen some drugs which are patches. So, people who are uh, who want to quit cigarette, they usually have something called a nicotine patch. So, that is intradermally, you know you are slowly injecting and that goes into the bloodstream. Uh, injections themselves can be of different types. You can have injections which are intravenous. So, when you go to the hospital because you are dehydrated and they give you a drip, I think that is where they put it in. But some injections like insulin are intramuscular, so it stays in the muscle for a little bit before going to the bloodstream. There are some drugs which are inhaled, so asthma attacks, if you have seen those, people have these drugs, so they, those go directly to the lung. So, how you administer a drug and what the body does to the drug, that part is called pharmacokinetics and that can get pretty complicated. The next thing is pharmacodynamics, so here what we are doing is once all of this processing has happened to the drug that you have injected, what does it do to the body? What part of the body does it go hit? So, when we were talking about uh, you know some of these painkillers, we know that the target is the nervous system. When you are talking about something like uh, an asthma drug, then the, the blood vessels in the lung are uh, and the alveoli and those structures in the lung are what that goes after. When you inject insulin, the targets are insulin receptors in various organs in the body, in the muscle, in the liver, etc., etc. So, what the drug does to the body is pharmacodynamics, and we will talk a little bit about what kind of modeling kind of and why it is useful to do all of those. At the end of the day, the questions you want to answer are still what is the right dose, what is the right frequency, can I tailor recommendations, all the kinds of questions that we want to ask. Uh, in the complex process of drug development, those are the questions we want to ask using modeling. Okay, so, we were talking about what happens to insulin when it is injected. So, this is the site of in injection, the first thing that happens is absorption. The second thing is once it is absorbed, it is not sitting in one little place in your body, it distributes evenly through your body and that is a simplification. We all know we are not like uh, you know bags of blood walking around, there is all kinds of complicated structure and microstructure inside the body, but to a you know, simple approximation, you think ok, you inject insulin and the entire blood gets, uh, suppose you injected uh, 10 uh, units of insulin, then that gets dissolved across the volume of uh, blood in your body. Then you come to metabolism, so this is kind of what does the body do to the drug when the body is very good at uh, very good at identifying anything which is a xenobiotic or anything which is foreign to it. So, insulin is a molecule that looks a lot like the body, but anything which comes in any protein will be chopped up, anything new will be cleaned up by these cleanup proteins. So, a lot of or in, in the case of insulin uh, uh, you know it will go and sit in the receptor and do the job it is supposed to do. Uh, are you guys somewhat familiar with uh, receptor uh, ligand dynamics, you know a lot of work in the cell happens 
because cells have receptors in their cell walls, something comes signals to that receptor, downstream there is a lot of mechanism and that is how a lot of biochemical processes happen. So, insulin is going to signal um, its receptors and you know that is a way something happens, you know the, the drug may be metabolized. And then you have elimination, when you inject insulin or you, you pop uh, some uh, acetaminophen, it is not like it is going to be in your body forever and forever, it gets eliminated, the kidney and the liver are the main organs of elimination and the drug gets eliminated. So, at the end of the day the one concept you should be familiar and it is one of those things that you may start seeing if you are interested in this field is ADME, absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination of any drug. So, this is a key uh, cornerstone of the concept of pharmacokinetics, what happens when a drug is uh, given to a person. Now, we can start to get even more quantitative and say hey I have injected a person with uh, insulin, in fact in this case I have injected 10 people with insulin and then I want to see what happens, I am also measuring what happens to the insulin in a compartment I loosely called plasma, but it can be measured in the blood or the plasma and there is all kinds of more detail there which I am not going to go into, but you can generally think of you know how much insulin is there in the plasma. So, this is in some units of concentration over time. Okay. <clears throat> so, this is the absorption phase and as you can tell at time 0 when you give the injection there is not much going on, boom you see some uh, increase in insulin as the insulin gets absorbed and you see this decrease as it, it gets uh, metabolized and eliminated. Okay. So, before we even go any further as uh, people with quantitative backgrounds and engineers you can already start thinking oh this looks like an exponential decay. So, that is something that you can model, if you think it is a little more complicated maybe it is a bi exponential you know it comes down fast and then goes away a little slow. So, those we can start getting into some interesting uh, mathematical ways to represent what is happening in the system. But the important points are the basic concepts of absorption, elimination are seen in these curves. The um, other important thing to remember as people who want to be in uh, health, biology and life sciences is variability. So, it is it's variability in, in many control settings often comes from second order, third order uh, uh, variables that the, the model does not care about. So, you can usually allocate that as noise, but in biology when you do the same experiment in 10 settings you are not going after one curve because 10 different human beings will behave differently because their parameters are going to be different. So, variability is something that we need to acknowledge uh, way up front uh, when we when we worry about things like this. Okay, so, that is uh, the basics of PK, so now let us get into some more juicier details of the mathematics and say how would I model the system. Anytime you want to make a model you first want to visualize what exactly am I doing and here this is what we are trying to visualize. All the complexity of the human body we are saying that is one box, it is obviously a simplification it would not work in all conditions, but we are saying it is a box. And then at, at some rate stuff is coming into the box, at some rate stuff is leaving the box. So, we can say K A and K E the rates of absorption and the rates of elimination. And you can say initially you gave a single dose and the amount is D, so you say you give D units of insulin, it gets absorbed uh, at a rate of K A per minute, it gets eliminated at a rate of K A per minute and we have the machinery of differential equations to write that up. These differential equations are simple enough that if you want to do something uh, which is a concentration which is what we saw in the previous chart, you can solve that exactly in terms of all of the parameters that you have and the volume of the system that you estimate and say at the end of the day the at, at time t this is what I expect the concentration of insulin to be. Ok, you are on to something, something which was a very maybe mysterious thing about somebody injecting themselves with insulin potentially can be simplified enormous simplification, but a useful simplification in terms of a one compartment pharmacokinetic model. Ok, we are on to something, yeah. Uh, where are the intermediate steps like D and M, we are only considering A and E, right? 
yeah uh, so in this model it i kept it simple but you can think of uh, if if you want to uh, have some more time for the distribution to happen maybe it happens over two compartments i did not go into that so you're correct though if you really want and and uh, so that's one thing the metabolism is another thing to think about in the sense that often you uh, give one drug it gets met metabolized and chopped up into some daughter uh, chemicals which are then used so distribution and metabolism can get complicated to model and understand in this case i chose to keep it simple and say something comes in something goes out which is an injection like that but you can have more complicated models that start worrying about those things and this potentially we can have as an exercise for you guys to do is everybody familiar with matlab or what's the software uh, karthik asks you to do your homework in matlab yeah so we can start getting interesting with things like this we can make more complicated models you can have one compartment models two compartment models and such but i what i want to show you here is even with these simple pk models you can start playing with the properties of drugs so these may be drugs that you know you are designing some drugs which are already on the market so we can pick up some papers and try to reproduce the 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 trajectories that you see of those drugs but here in a slightly more complicated model what you can do is you can start playing with the drug the current drug is this red curve here okay as you can see it has got a pretty peaky profile the peaky profile you can uh, try to quantify it by saying what is the peak over the trough over a 24 hour period how much higher is the peak over the trough now for whatever reason if you're not comfortable with that and if you want to make this less peaky you can start varying the ka or the ke and we can have an exercise to figure out which will work to make that drug flatter and flatter at the end of the day another important concept in this is area under the curve so you know what you know you guys know area under the curve so we may still want to keep the area under the curve the same but we may want to have a flatter profile so these models help us understand how do we want to change these so that the profile is a little more to our liking now does this have a real world application indeed so we were talking about insulin again and let's get into a little bit more about the physiology and the biology here so if you look at how healthy people secrete insulin that's this purple kind of uh, area here so there's a lot of variation but at the end of the day for every meal people secrete some insulin so you know you your body you try to eat some meal to in order to process that insulin is secreted and you have that nice three peak pattern but you want to have a drug that mimics that pattern so if you're a diabetic either you don't have enough insulin or you have no insulin at all so you don't want a drug profile which is flat you don't want a drug profile which is too peaky you want to keep varying the drug profiles so that you're able to match the endogenous insulin secretion so again how many of your family members inject insulin more than once a day do you do you over a meal so some people if they're really sick they need a meal time insulin so before breakfast before lunch before dinner so that insulin will have a peaky pharmacokinetic profile it will do something like that and people who whose insulin is somewhat whose diabetes is somewhat under control or early in the game they often uh, take uh, uh, insulins which have a flat or a gentle profile like that so that that uh, takes care of their insulin coverage through the day so these are kind of some real world questions that we'll have to grapple with when we're thinking about pharmacokinetics yeah uh uh yes so that's the thing that i had here so the the reason you have to be careful when you dose people with insulin is that you don't want to overdose them so here we'll talk a little bit more about the physiology but let me give you a little uh, peek here so this is glucose levels okay so if you're sick your glucose levels are high so this is the diabetic's glucose levels he starts at maybe 150 mg per deciliter that's how glucose is measured you sh you start with that much and that's how your glucose profile looks every day but your job as the drug developer is to bring that down so you want to bring it down to a healthy level which is that green area here but you have to be careful you don't want to bring it down too much because glucose is an essential fuel if you have too little glucose your brain will not have enough glucose to process and you may go into something called hypoglycemia again those that have relatives that have diabetes this is very important they usually have a some candy or some juice in the fridge 
because if they have too much medication or if they have medication and they skipped a meal, bad things can happen. They can get dizzy, they can get very tired because you have overshot your therapeutic window. So that is another concept in drug development, you almost always have a therapeutic window. You want to make something go low but not too low, you want to make something go high but not too high. So that is the reason you do not want to have too peaky in insulin because you do not want to overshoot your efficacy. You do not want to have uh, or if it is for a meal you want to make sure it is peaky enough and goes away. So those are some of the reasons that we may want to manipulate the PK. Yeah, but good question. Yeah. <clears throat> so you know this is kind of what we were talking about. But the, the other magic and another area for engineers to contribute to is um, is is really the engineering protein engineering. So we can do fascinating things with proteins. So if you talk about insulin, we said okay, 1960 we uh, sequenced the protein, so we are able to uh, generate our own insulin. But not only are we able to generate our own insulin, we can make that insulin less or more absorbent. So the original insulin which, uh, which was just uh, our human insulin, that, that had a PK profile which looks like this. So that had the original PK profile which looks like this. But today just from engineering the proteins, making adding some fat to them, adding some extra protein to them, adding some nonsense peptide to them whatever it not fat, the peptide and protein whatever you add to them, you can, you can kind of change the way the PK is, you can make them eliminate faster. So this can be a rapid acting insulin somebody takes right after breakfast, right before breakfast or you can make it very slow to absorb and very slow to uh, go away and have a day long flat coverage. So that is kind of how multiple disciplines come together to make something complex and you know have all of that uh, knowledge uh, behind them. So modeling in pharma exists across a spectrum okay. So uh, there are statistical models a lot of you may be familiar with them. So this is when you have a lot of data you want to start visualizing it building regression models these are in modeling terminology often called black box models because you are saying I do not know how y is dependent on x but it is some functional form which fits all the data and I am not going into any more detail than that. So that you can do when you have a lot of data. All the way at the other end is what we call grey box modeling. So you can say y equals fx but wait this x is actually x1, x2, x3, x4 and I know that x1 increases y, x2 decreases y beyond the threshold and what are the more complicated interactions. So that is what we can think of as knowledge based modeling. So we have a notion of what the system looks like in our heads and we want to implement that mathematically. So that is grey box modeling. All of this can happen in pharma, uh, some, something in between also. So here I do not like, like the model we just spoke about, it is a gross simplification, it is not even close to uh, what happens in reality but it works. And, is, and while it is not a complete black box model because we have some understanding of what is happening. So there is a range of such models and I will be talking a little bit more about models all the way on the right hand side here. <clears throat>